This is a short video of how to create a section model based on a transformed loft model. Uh, I'm in centimeters right now in my unit uh, setup and uh, we are in centimeters um, system unit setup. Uh, I already created a line. Uh, the line has a length of 10 centimeters. Uh, next step, I just uh, produced uh, a rectangle. A rectangle of 2 meter, 50, uh, 2 meter 40 by 2 meter 80. I just draw another rectangle uh, inside, uh, something like uh, something like this. That's fine. I just copy it to uh, to the right and um, just change my setting. And with my first rectangle, I just say I want to have the dimensions of uh, 1 meter 80 by 2 meter 14 and uh, this one I just also change in terms of dimensions uh, somehow something like um, something like this. It's important that you just not only turn it around because at the end of the day all these vertices have numbers. If I just go and right mouse click and say convert to edit little spline you can just see on vertex mode that um, all these vertices have uh, have numbers, uh, number one, two, three, and four. And if I just turn it around, then number one is still here. And this also means that in my loft function, this will have an impact. It's not much happening. So you just have to really uh, rechange the, the shape. So the next thing I do, I just go into attach and attach my uh, my object. And I choose my, my spline, I choose my second spline. Also here, I just say right mouse click convert to editable spline and I go into attach and I can attach uh, this one. And these are already my two shapes for my uh, loft. So what I can do is I can just choose my line. I go into geometry compound objects and uh, I choose my loft functions. And in my loft functions, uh, this is already my path. So I get into, into get shape and if I just choose this object, you can already see that uh, this is following my, uh, my, uh, my path. And uh, in this path parameter, you can choose between pen, uh, percentage and distance. And um, just because we know that our object is 10 meters, I can just say in 500 centimeters, I choose um, another shape. I just uh, choose uh, the second shape, uh, this one. And in uh, 10 meters, I choose again uh, my, uh, my first shape. So now I have a transition from uh, number one to number two, and again to number one. And obviously, you can also uh, change these if I just um, go inside and, uh, for example, go on my spline level and I just move this. You can just see that uh, this also has an impact on my geometry. So that's already quite uh, uh, quite good. Uh, the whole thing, uh, I can already see what, what this actually does. If I select again my loft, uh, then you can see that there's something like a skin parameters and you can uh, define the steps. And if I reduce it to zero, we just see my three uh, my three loft shapes and uh, I can optimize my path in, uh, in uh, X and uh, Y direction. If I reduce it to zero again, as I see, these are my, um, my actual loft shapes. And if I go in my loft function into shape, I can select my, uh, my shapes. You can see this right now. And uh, I can also just start to deform my shapes. I can even go into the shapes, shapes parameter again, for example, on my vertex level for whatever kind of reason I want to uh, do this one. So a uh, full control, you can also see that it actually has an impact on my uh, geometry. And we can also see that this is a, a corner type. And if I go on right mouse click uh, of my object here, um, again, I select my uh, my vertex point and say just I convert it to, uh, to corner, then uh, we have something like a, uh, like a corner element uh, uh, here right now. So you have control in your loft and you also have control in your, um, in your shapes next to your object. And if I go again here on spline level, I can select my splines inside and you can just see 
that it works and if I obviously change it like this then my geometry is destroyed because you leave uh, the border of my um, of my loft and uh, you can also work obviously on um, on the path level I just selected the path of my loft and if I change this one for example I just move it or uh, I just have the idea to um, to add uh, another point I just go into segments and uh, just say uh, divide uh, just have to select it actually and just go into divide then I have another point here and if I just move this point I go again into my vertex level then uh, you can already see that you uh, have several options on optimizing your, uh, your loft function Okay, I twist it a little bit more. I just choose my first shape and uh, rotate this a little bit like this. I can also actually scale it. Okay, here we go. Okay, the next thing we want to do, we want to create uh, a sectioning model in uh, Power 3D. And uh, for this, uh, I first uh, draw a plane in my uh, in my left uh, left view, and I just change to uh, to shape mode. Press my F uh, three, and then I just move the plane a little bit. Uh, that I have my first section already. Okay, and this uh, plane we just use and uh, import into Power Three D. I just go into create parametric array, and uh, we want to have it as an array of uh, fifteen sectioning planes 15 and I don't want to keep the original object in this case because it's a really simple plane okay let's go into create okay move out a little bit and uh, here is my uh, uh, a node of my um, of my plane actually I move the whole thing a little bit uh, uh, to the side and uh, I can just see uh, I just want to see what kind of parameters I actually want to change. If I select my X, X position, then you can see that you can move, um, move the plane. And uh, this is what I want to do. I don't want to uh, move it in uh, Y direction right now. This is, uh, you can see it in my left view. That's not important to me. I can leave it like this. And uh, right now, I don't want to move it into... Uh, Z direction so far. Okay, so uh, we want to move it in X direction, and I want to have full full control of uh, of my movements. So what I actually do, I just use uh, the math controller. Uh, I select uh, X position and I drag and drop to get my uh, controller library. I just enter MA like math controller, and with double click, I just um, apply my math controller here we go and uh, what I want to do I just want to have my uh, sectioning planes uh, in a line and so I want to move the first one and the second one should have the position of the first one plus a next distance plus a next distance plus a next distance so what I need is I just need an operation a, a plus B I just select this and uh, for A I have to define that A always changes from one to the next position and here I have to add a link controller I just do it right now L E N like link uh, link controller and in my link controller I always have to say that it has to be the previous item of this direction that's actually the first dimension that's why I, I choose previous item in D1 and I also have to uh, choose which kind of parameter I want to use so I just go into pick a track and here we see all options of my um, my object or of my whole uh, uh, path 3d environment I just open uh, uh, this object plane and I open transformation I open X Y and Z position I select my X position I click into uh, OK and uh, here we go that's what we uh, actually want to do and that's uh, that's fine and if I now go again into my math controller 
we can just see that operand A is my parametric link, uh, the operation I just did. And if I now, for example, uh, choose uh, go into B1, uh, uh, B, and I say 100 is actually centimeters, I just say update controller, we just see that they all move uh, uh, one meter, and I have a good control of um, of uh, moving my uh, moving my plane into my uh, into my um, into my x direction in principle i can also use uh, other operations if i probably say i want to have a multiplied by b uh, and then uh, this 50 is definitely too high i just go into high and just update and we can see that it already uh, has a big um, uh, big effect on my uh, on my sectioning planes, uh, I just reduce it to 1.3, for example, and update it again, and then we can just see that in between uh, we um, we have something like a, a gradient. Okay, I move again to uh, a plus b, and I increase my uh, my b again to uh, 50 centimeters. I update. And uh, what you can also do is uh, you can also change uh, the amounts in between. I just uh, for this I just add a controller to my B, and I just say I used uh, the pattern controller, and uh, double click again, move out a little bit, and uh, I rearrange it that it looks uh, a little bit better. And if I choose my pattern controller, I can say that my first position is uh, 50 centimeters. My next position is uh, 70 centimeters, and uh, uh, the next is uh, 100 centimeters. If I update this, you can just see uh, what it does. I have 50 centimeters, I have 70 centimeters. So the first one is uh, 50 centimeters, 70 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 50 centimeters again, 70 centimeters, 100 centimeters. So you have full control of, my, um, of your uh, sectioning plane. Okay, I zoom out a little bit. I select all my uh, all my nodes. Say right click, um, uh, arrange, so it looks a little bit better. And uh, now I still move this up a little bit. And I just want to add another parameter. I just want to rotate my uh, sectioning planes. Uh, with this, I just uh, see in which direction I would like to rotate it. I just check my uh, x direction. And if I check my expression, you can see that I'm still in my uh, math controller. So just be aware, you always have to deselect all the properties. Uh, and so only the x direction is uh, selected. And uh, uh, when I deselect my x position and only select x rotation, you can see that I can uh, start rotating this. And uh, I actually want to rotate it in my, uh, in my x direction. And I'll just go into 90 degrees again. And here we just use another controller. In this uh, uh, case, we no use the interpolate controller. I just enter inter, interpolate, double click. And uh, what you can do with the interpolate controller, you can just select sectionings. And I just select uh, these uh, three. I just uh, hold my string key. These three sectioning planes I select, and I just go into Add Selected Items. Here we go, and here I can uh, just go through my list again, and you can just see that I can choose my sectioning planes uh, through this list. And uh, what I can actually do is I can just start rotating this. And uh, I don't do this in the viewport, I just do it again in my uh, and my power control uh, window to have much better control. So I can just say I move it to 110 degrees. And uh, the next one I just uh, move in uh, 70 degrees. And uh, this one again I move into uh, 100, uh, yeah, 110 10 degrees. And, uh, Let's see uh, what, what this does. So far it doesn't look good because obviously you just have to uh, update this. And uh, after you updated this, you can see that uh, this moves exactly the way I wanted to have it. And uh, this looks already quite, uh, quite good. 
And uh, with these kind of things like the MEF controller in terms of uh, organizing it along the length of my loft function and with uh, the interpolate controller to control rotations and obviously you can also use the same thing to the right direction, the set direction, you already have a really good control of your sectioning planes. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I would just want to um, so, uh, use my sectioning planes uh, for my loft model. And for this, I first have to uh, uh, load my loft model into Path 3D. I just select it. I go into my Create Parametric Array. I don't want to have it as an array. I just want to assign controllers, actually, my uh, sectioning planes. So I uh, choose my loft and uh, just say Assign uh, Controllers. And I don't need to uh, uh, choose uh, to work on my spline based level of my uh, sectioning planes. I just do this at the end of the day in my uh, in my uh, viewport. And um, okay, that's fine. So uh, this is actually my loft model. And uh, to create uh, sectioning planes, you have to uh, add another node. You have to uh, add the node contour generator. Okay, we move the contour generator uh, to my uh, next to my loft. I'll organize it a little bit, and uh, when I open my um, contour generator, uh, we first connect my para node uh, to my para loft object. In next case, I want to connect uh, my transform to my sectioning planes, but uh, I can't con uh, connect the matrix to uh, to a para. Uh, power node. So the first uh, thing I have to do, I just have to use um, a parametric array link controller. If I just add this, zoom out again a little bit, uh, then you can just see that from this one you go into a parametric array link controller and you have this power and this power um, connection you can now connect to my power planes. Here we go. And I have to select the properties. Uh, if I go into show properties all, you can see that you can choose transform and that's actually what I also used in my, um, in my plane. I just double click on this. Uh, I can uh, expand the, uh, the items and you can just see that uh, I, uh, I used my transform for my, uh, for my plane. I select again my, um, my link controller Okay, I have to uh, update my uh, my um, controller, and uh, I just go back into a contour, and I can't see my main menu because I'm still in my transform. So I just have to deselect this, and uh, I still can't create uh, uh, sectionings because uh, I need the same amount of my uh, uh, contour to the same amount of my planes, and I just enter 15. And if I did this, I can just press Contour Generate, and it already generated my uh, uh, my sectionings. If I go into this button, select Para Members, and I go into uh, Isolate Selection Toggle, we can see that it just created my uh, sectioning planes uh, based on my loft function. Okay, there's one thing I would like to optimize. Uh, I always have to change the amount of uh, uh, contours to the amount of planes. So I have two positions and what I can actually do, I can just add an array size. I just uh, scroll out again and this is my array size. And uh, if I connect it to my para plane and the other node, I just connect to my uh, para contour, okay, like this. And uh, first of all, I enter my number 15 again, so nothing is happening, but if I just go into uh, and enter here number 20 and go into update, we can just see that it updates both. It just ad updated the amount of, um, amount of sectioning planes in my contour and also in my uh, in my plane. If I just go into plane and I deselect all, you can see that this has a count of 20. And in my contour, it also has the count of 20. And um, if I just reduce it to number 10, count 10, and I update all controllers, then you can just see 
that it just reduced it. And if I go into my contour and just say generate contour, then you can also see that I already created my uh, sectionings. There's one thing which probably doesn't look uh, good, good to you, and uh, this is what happens with my sectioning planes. It could be that you have to um, reorganize your uh, rotation and uh, just choose the first one, and this doesn't look good, and I uh, remove it, and I just add it again to my uh, to my um, to my uh, selection and. Uh, just turn it a little bit and uh, update. And now it already looks uh, looks good. Okay, I want to increase the size of my uh, sectionings again. I don't do this in my plane anymore. I just do it in my array size and I just go and choose 14. Uh, go into update all controllers and here again uh, I optimize my uh, rotation again, I choose my first one and uh, this doesn't look good, it's a little bit of an error actually. I just uh, remove my, uh, my, um, my rotation and uh, uh, choose it again and um, then I just add the item. And with my plane selected I can just change the, the values and I go again into update all controllers and you can just see that um, again I have a good control of my uh, sectioning planes and if I want to have uh, uh, now uh, a section of my loft function I just go back to my contour and uh, just uh, go into generate contours now and it's calculating and if I go into select power uh, members and go into isolate selection we can see that these are my contours of my uh, of my new array with 14 arrays uh, based on my loft function okay what we finally can do we can just uh, label the whole thing I just go into uh, label and uh, here I just say uh, set set count of uh, sectioning planes and uh, I can also make it a little bit bigger, bigger by the way and so that's probably a good way of um, organizing uh, your scene a little bit that uh, some days later you still uh, know what's, uh, what's going on. Okay, uh, the next step we want to do, we just want to give these uh, sectionings a thickness and for this I add something like a parametric array, uh, a copy actually. Uh, I want to produce, sorry, not a copy, a reference and uh, a reference uh, so we can uh, work on this uh, on this uh, sectionings and I connect my para with my para of the sectioning planes what I did right now and with uh, this I automatically um, uh, made a copy uh, and uh, this copy uh, we want uh, to add something like a shell modifier Okay, I just go into unhide and I just see that these are my uh, sectioning planes, my model again. I just go into select uh, first uh, member of array. And the first member of array, let's see which one this is actually. Um, okay, this is my uh, sectioning plane here, GV uh, grid, and then I can switch this off. Uh, I just attach um, my uh, my um, shell modifier and uh, I give give this an amount of an outer amount of uh, 10 centimeters 10 centimeters for my sectioning plane here we go and uh, if I want to add this also to my other sectioning which is obviously the aim uh, I do I just do the following I just go and uh, say reload properties uh, would you like to access all vertices? Uh, I actually don't no need this. And here we go. So all my um, all my sectionings now have a thickness. And if I go again into select para members and I just uh, say next step isolate selection, then we can see that I have my uh, sectioning planes with a thickness uh, in a way I at the end of the day uh, wanted to have it. 
Okay, uh, some things I can do. Um, if I look at my um, uh, parametric array reference, I can uh, adjust my shell function in uh, my uh, uh, par menu. I just check uh, outer amount. Uh, this is uh, what we adjusted. I can also go into inner amount. Uh, this is so far zero, but also this can obviously change. I just go into zero again. And uh, if I just um, change my outer amount, I can have different options. I can use uh, something like uh, the interpolate controller, like we had before. I can some use uh, something like the random controller. Double click. Uh, now we have my random controller. And I just want to have a random between uh, 5 centimeters and, uh, let's say, 20 centimeters. I go into. Uh, update all controllers and uh, here we go and now we have this uh, uh, window we can just see when I click on this it is always changing if I like one then I have to go into use pattern and then it's fixed and uh, you update this and it doesn't change anymore and that's probably also quite handy uh, you can also just say I don't want to have um, a random controller I want to have an interpolate controller uh, double click on interpolate and here again we can choose um, for example this one and uh, hold my string key this sectioning plane the other one and I go into add selected items I choose my first one and my first one gets a thickness of uh, five centimeters my second one in the middle gets a thickness of 20 centimeters and uh, the third one gets a thickness of 5 centimeters again and if I update this then we can see that this already works uh, uh, works quite well. If I want to laser cut these uh, then I do the following I just add another uh, parametric array on it and uh, I go again into reference here we go I just connect it to my um, to my contours uh, like this, and um, if I choose all of them, then I have again my sectioning planes without uh, without shell function, and I just have to go into transform transform, and I choose my packing controller. Double click my packing controller and I want to organize it in a rectangular way uh, on in my top view and when I know the dimensions of my laser cutter and in this terms it's a plane of 80 by um, 80 by uh, I probably have to think about uh, in which kind of scale I want to print uh, my object and uh, I think I'll just do it in a, a 1 to 10 so uh, I scale it uh, afterwards I just say uh, 800 uh, centimeters by 450 centimeters this one too much let's see 450 centimeters okay and uh, I can um, pick this packing area like this and uh, I move this a little bit uh, up and I don't want to have a big gap between uh, these objects and if I now go into update we can see that it starts to organize my um, my uh, sectionings uh, on this uh, on the surface and I can just choose different kind of uh, packing uh, systems and uh, so we just see which kind of packing is uh, is the best and it depends on, I also have the option to readjust a little bit. At the end of the day, it has to fit on my object. And I also think that the scale of 1 to 10 is probably still a little bit too big. So it's probably 1 to 20 or something like this. And uh, you just have to scale it that uh, it, fits, uh, it fits for your laser cutting. Finally, you probably want to build a small construction to hold it uh, after a laser cutting. And uh, what you can do is uh, we just draw a small box like uh, like this one. It's a little bit too high. I guess just give it a dim dimension of um, two centimeters width, and then uh, just adjust it. There's an intersection with all my all my planes. 
just a really rough sketch and it can be definitely a much more elaborated uh, shape but uh, just uh, just leave it just uh, leave it like this just a principal uh, principal object and um, if I go into my para and I just assign a controller I can take this object I move it to my um, to my parametric array with my uh, sectioning planes and I just add one uh, paranoid it's the compound paranoid with this we can have a bo uh, boolean operation and uh, just um, uh, say I want to uh, have an input of, uh, of a power node actually and then I say I have my power node A and uh, my power node B which are actually my uh, sectioning planes and then next step I say each item of A with uh, all items of uh, B this makes sense so you have uh, this object uh, connected with all my um, all my sectioning planes, I go into output and say mesh and next step like a bool, sh a bool, uh, bool operation I go into subtraction and say uh, generate compound objects and if I just select this which I do right now then we can just see that it cut my, uh, my objects properly and this is something you can use actually for laser cutting you just make a section plane through this and have something to uh, fix your objects Okay, we finished this video with playing with the parameters and first uh, we, we look at my uh, loft object. We select my loft object, we select my sectioning planes and uh, also my path, that's this one. We just go into isolate selection and uh, then I can play with my uh, shapes. There are two shapes, actually one at uh, position, position 0, one at position 50% my loft and one at position um, uh, 100% and I can also uh, select these if I go into shape uh, I have the chance to uh, select my um, select my uh, shapes and also again uh, obviously rotate it and do uh, do things like this and uh, if I uh, select one of these shapes for example like um, uh, like this one I go again ag into my segments and I can uh, readjust it and we can just see that it again has an impact on my, on my loft and of course also in my loft you can select shapes again uh, like this one you can start uh, turning them again I just um, turn, make them s slightly straight and if I go into my path redeem back to my path 3D I just select my uh, loft function and uh, I go on uh, I select selection off so I see all my objects uh, then I can just uh, repeat the process I just uh, choose my contour I just say generate contours and I just generate it on the on the new on the new shape I and if we just select uh, my uh, parametric away reference object and uh, just choose select power members and I go into isolate selection then we can also see that my uh, sectionings already reacted to this uh, to this shape